a new tool lets artists poison the data associated with their art and images before they get crawled by AI. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. And boy, do we have an interesting one to start with today. In fact, one of the big themes across this entire brief is the realignment of the internet and internet contributors in the context of massive AI companies crawling and in many people's minds at least stealing their data. Now, for some, the remediation here is policy, right? They are waiting for people in Washington, politicians and policymakers to tell the AI companies what they can and can't do. To be fair to those AI companies, they're also increasingly allowing people to opt out. Apparently, something like 535 big publishers are now blocking OpenAI from scraping their data to train their future models. But the MIT Technology Review wrote about an even more dramatic step that is based in technology itself that many folks who have been up in arms about AI are quite excited about. The tool in question is called Nightshade, and it's being referred to as a data poisoning tool. Now, if nothing else, Nightshade is an excellent and evocative name. But basically what it does is it allows people who are uploading images, particularly artists who are uploading images of their art, to change pixels in such a way that it confuses the data that an AI model would get. These changes are invisible to the naked eye, but they can, as the MIT Technology Review puts it, cause the resulting model to break in chaotic and unpredictable ways. Effectively, these hidden pixels tell the AI models that are being trained on them that things in the images are not what they actually are. Again, as this report describes it, dogs become cats, cars become cows, and so forth. Now, this project is being led by researchers from the University of Chicago, led by Ben Zhao. The team involved say they view it as a power balancing tool. And effectively, they're trying to create an incentive for AI companies to come back to the table and actually find some way to compensate people for the data their models are trained on. Now, this is not the first project from this team at the University of Chicago that plays in a similar space. They also developed a tool called Glaze which works in a similar way. It allows artists to mask their personal style so that the AI model thinks it looks different than it actually does. For those of you listening, I suggest you hop on over to the YouTube, which you can find at youtube.com slash at the AI breakdown. There's an image they show of how these tools work in practice. For Nightshade, they show a variety of items like dog, car, handbag, hat, fantasy art, cubism, cartoon, concept art that decay in serious ways once these poison samples are introduced. By the time 300 poison samples are introduced into the model, a dog becomes a cat, a car becomes a cow, a handbag becomes a toaster, a hat becomes a cake, the fantasy art style becomes pointillism, cubism becomes anime, cartoon becomes impressionism, and concept art becomes abstract. They also give an example when glaze is used. Basically, the pixels tell the AI model that the art being imitated is actually of a very different style than it is. So for example, it might encode the idea that it's an oil painting by Vincent van Gogh, when actually it's just a sepia photorealistic photo. Now, when it comes to the question of whether this is the right way to fight against these models or to try to redress balance, I'm not really sure. Obviously, having an AI-focused show, you can guess that to some extent I'm balanced on the way that AI opens up new creative pathways. At the same time, I do think that this is an existential struggle for a lot of artists, and that kind of makes any and all tactics totally reasonable. The big AI labs certainly have a bigger balance of resources, but regardless, it is going to be an interesting fight to watch. I do think it's reflective of an assumption that perhaps policy isn't really going to be the right path. And indeed, there's still every chance that courts rule that training AI models is a version of fair use and does not trigger copyright rules, in which case artists will definitely need something like this if they're trying to prevent their works from being trained upon. Certainly, there is much enthusiasm on Twitter as this article went hyper viral. Now, speaking of companies who are taking a strong stand against AI training, Reddit is apparently in deep discussions with the big AI labs about being compensated for training on Reddit's vast trove of conversations and information. Now, of course, earlier this year, they changed AP access pricing, which was a hugely polarizing move. Many third-party developers who didn't have anything to do with AI were caught up in the changes, which of course led many in the community to be extremely frustrated. At the same time, Reddit basically said that they had to do this to prevent big generative AI companies from using their data to train LLMs. Citing an anonymous source, the Washington Post said that if these conversations with these top generative AI companies don't go well, that Reddit is potentially ready to take some dramatic actions. From the Washington Post, if a deal can't be reached, Reddit is considering blocking search crawlers from Google and Bing, which would prevent the forum site from being discovered in searches and reduce the number of visitors to the site. But the company believes the trade-off would be worth it, saying Reddit can survive without search. Now, part of why Reddit may be emboldened, because earlier this year, 
thousands of subreddits went dark, which apparently led to discontent among Google search users. A leaked audio recording of an internal company meeting saw a Google SVP saying that Google users were unhappy about not having access to Reddit through the search site. Now, on the flip side, similar web suggests that around 49% of Reddit's traffic comes from search engines, which means that if they did take this move, it would be extremely dramatic and have significant impact on their usage and ultimately probably their bottom line as well. If anything, this just dramatizes how high companies see the stakes around this question of AI training. Now, moving over to the big tech side of the AI world, Microsoft has made a major announcement that they're making their biggest investment in Australia in 40 years. The company is going to invest around $5 billion over the next couple years to boost AI in the country. The biggest part of that will be a 45% increase in Microsoft-owned data centers in the country, growing from 20 to 29. But then on top of that, they will also be establishing a Microsoft Data Center Academy and also collaborating on a cybersecurity initiative. The announcement was made as part of the Australian Prime Minister's visit to the U.S. this week. Now, moving over to Apple again, obviously, if you've been following along here, Apple's AI strategy has been much discussed in the news lately. Not that they've made any announcements, but there have been a lot of reports and analyses from people who are watching, for example, their supply chains that suggest an approach to AI coming into view. John Gruber, who writes the Daring Fireball blog, which is one of the best known Apple trackers in the world, wrote about that report from Bloomberg that we talked about yesterday on Apple's AI strategy. I think Mark Gurman's summary does get to an essential truth. If I asked you which companies are at the forefront of AI-powered products, I doubt you'd put Apple on the list. And AI is proving so useful, and yet it is a nascent field, that Apple needs to soon be on the list lest their products begin to fall behind competitively. Which companies are best at integrating AI into products is going to be like which companies are best at creating hardware at scale, and which companies are best at human interface design. Now, he also commented on German's report that a person of knowledge inside the company said, there's a lot of anxiety about this, and it's considered a pretty big miss internally. Gruber writes, what I have heard from Little Birdies and Cupertino is not that there was a miss on this already. Apple is almost never at the forefront of stuff like this. They're a deliberate company. Their goal, as with any new technology, is to integrate it into products in meaningful ways best, not first. That's why there is no internal anxiety that they've already missed anything related to AI. The anxiety inside Apple is that many people inside do not believe Apple's own AI ML team can deliver. And but that the company, if only for privacy reasons, is only going to use what comes from their own AI ML team. So basically saying this a little bit differently, the report that Gruber is getting is that there is concern and anxiety around AI strategy, but not because Apple is already behind, but because they don't have faith in who's working on the problem internally to actually deliver something great. Interesting little wrinkle and twist. Meanwhile, as a sign of how serious this is, Apple analyst Ming-Chai Kuo has written a widely circulated report that they expect Apple to spend up to $4.75 billion on AI servers in 2024. Now, in terms of where these numbers are coming from, it's a little bit hard to ascertain. I kind of feel like it's that meme of what's the source, I made it up. But it's a respected analyst and lots of people talking about it. And I think that even if the exact numbers are wrong, the fact that these reports keep making news suggests just how much people are paying attention to what the Cupertino giant is going to do next. Anyways, friends, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Next up, the main AI Breakdown.